Hopefully everything's running smooth, nice, and delicate, like me. <laughs> Alright, we're back with more Corpse Party. Hi, how you doing? Hello, people. How's it going? Where we last left off, let me move this mouse. Mice? Mice? Hmm. Let me move this mouse out of my way, not mice. Alright, where we last left off with Corpse Party. We beat two chapters. We beat Mare and Tooth. Um, I keep saying Mare. I feel like this is pronounced something like Mire or something. I feel like I'm pronouncing this one wrong, but I'm calling it Mare. Fuck it. Uh, we played those. Mare focused on ooh, eesh. What did he even focus on? Oh fuck, I don't even remember. Yuka. It focused on Yuka. There we go. Yeah, it focused on Yuka. Apparently, um... Uh, did my voice just crack? Holy shit. Apparently, Sachiko likes playing with Yuka, but for some reason, she... She said she'll save her from her fate? Or spare her from her fate? So, I'm assuming in a different... In a different loop somewhere, Yuka's dead. But, uh... But instead of giving her the brand that everyone apparently has on them. She's like, fuck it, you can go, you can survive, I guess. I'll spare you. And then Tooth just had to, Tooth just told us a little bit more about Kazami. And he's just a crazy guy, but we already knew that. We already knew that, even without the darkening, he's still crazy. So those were two short, short, um, uh, short chapters. Tooth was very short. It was very short, the shortest by far. And to be honest, probably my least favorite. Because there's just not much to go on there. Right? Like, at least in terms of, uh, purgatory. We learned, we learned some things. Tooth, we really didn't learn much. I'll be honest, we didn't learn shit. We didn't learn jack shit. It, we, it was just there. And I thought they were gonna, like, you know... Go into more detail about how... I forgot the girl's name. What was her name? Toko? On how, like, Toko was different as the other people towards Kazami, but they kind of didn't. The story was just like, eh, she loved him. Eh. And they did nothing more with that, so, whatever. So, Blood Drive is the next one that we have. And by the name itself, I'm assuming... I'm assuming this- I'm assuming this one is very, very important. Also, the fact that it was the only one that was unlocked, uh, from the beginning, not counting Seal. Um, so yeah, that's- that's interesting. Let me just make sure, and the options, that the voices are down, because we do be listening to those testimonies. Like I'm a goddamn lawyer. Alright, there we go. Now, for some reason tonight, my PC is acting slow. I don't know why. I literally just turned it on. It literally just been on since, like, I don't know, first time me turning it on in, like, two days. So, I don't know why it's acting like that. Maybe, maybe it's just, maybe it's just a little, a little cranky. Woke it up too soon. That's kind of like me right now. Why the fuck? Do I have the heat on in my house? Hold up. It's hot as fuck in here. It's like really hot in here. I think I got the heat on in my house. I don't want to get up. You know what? I'm, I'm going to do it. I'm going to get up. Hold up. Give me a second. I'll be right back. Let me make sure that the heat is off in this house because there's no reason why the heat should be on. Okay, we are back. Where's my mouse? There it is. We're back. Sorry about that. Apparently the heat was on in my house. <laughs> I'm sitting here and I'm like, why does it feel? I'm like, why does it feel like it's getting warmer in here? What the fuck? I guess I turned my heat. I'm, I'm pretty sure I turned my heat off. But I'm guessing what happened is that I might have turned it the wrong way. Huh. I really hope that I turned it the right way this time because 
I do not like playing in a hot ass room. Oh man. All right. So now let's get going with Corpse Party Book of Shadows Blood Drive. I really hope that I really hope everything's running well. <laughs> my PC is not having none of my nonsense today, apparently. I don't even have that much water with me. Book of Shadows Prologue. Prologue. Wait a minute. Prologue. I'm sorry? Did I... Did I play this... Did I play this out of order? <laughs> Did I play this out of order? If that's the prologue, why did you put it all the way at the bottom? Oh my god, if that's the prologue, then... Huh. I have a- I have a feeling that we're gonna finish this game in like fucking- in like an hour. <laughs> Oops! All right, whatever. Hey, Naomi, you seem troubled. Housewife number one. <laughs> and you know what my kid told me? He said that incident, wait, what? Okay, he said that incident was connected with an underground website that had gotten real popular at his school. Oh, I think I heard about that one on the news a while back. Profiles being used for bullying and to find dates. Is that kind of stuff still going on? Still going on. What do you mean is that still going on? Honey, it's never, it's never left. Well, the news has stopped covering it, but it still seems to be happening, from what I hear. I added like five different new words into that sentence. I wonder if my kids go on the website like that. Maybe I should talk to him about it. Be like, hey son, you, you going on that website with the profiles and you talk to people and you... Are you trying to find dates? Are you bullying people? Are you winning, son? It was late afternoon, right around the time students were returning home from school, and here I was again. Here I go again on my own. Standing right in front of the intercom at the door to Seiko's house. I've been here for over an hour now, standing, staring, wondering whether to push that button. But don't touch that dial. I must have looked really suspicious, especially since I've been here yesterday and the day before too, and each time I wound up just going home. But today would be different. That's what I told myself. Today I actually pushed the intercom button. I was ready to face my demons. My inner demons. Seiko's siblings. Huh? Hey, you two just can't run off like that. That was you, Seiko's younger brother. All right, line up. Make sure you got your shoes on tight. There we go. Hey, straighten the hat. Very good. I think we're ready now. Take my hand, please. Uh, wait. Take my hands, please. Now you think you two can? Now you think you two can behave at the market? Kai, Aya. Uh huh. You bet. That's what I like to hear. I made sure I hid out of sight while they, while they were leaving the house. You and those other two kids were definitely Seiko's younger siblings. They were the reason I had come. They were the ones I wanted to see. I had no idea what I'd say to them, but I knew for sure that Seiko existed, so I had to say something. Maybe I'd show them this cell phone picture and tell them, hey, this is your sister, and ask if they remember anything about her. Hey, this one's your sister. I don't know why her face is all null and void, but that's your sister. Trust me, I know these things. It would be okay. I just need to explain myself. They understand. They had to. I made up my mind. Now was the perfect chance. I stepped out from my hiding place. Hey. But barely made out a single word before I left someone... Wait, what? But barely made out a single word before I felt someone- Before I left. Before I felt someone grab my arm from behind, holding me back. Don't hold me back, man. Let me go. Who's there? Don't do this. Don't do it. 
Class rep? I understand where you're coming from, but you can't do this. Our class rep, Shinozaki, was shaking her head, shaking her head at me. She was determined to stop me from confronting Seiko's family. My vision was starting to blur. What do you plan to say to them? You know how it's going to turn out. But, but, you can't let me. I couldn't hold back my tears any longer. I squatted on the ground and looked up at the class rep who was staring back at me. Then she called me a whore. Then I went, what? <laughs> I'll never forget that. The first game, she's like, oh, you whore. And I'm like, what? I was like, whoa, where that came from? There were only a handful of people in the world who would truly understand what I was going through. Only those of us who returned from Heavenly Host Elementary alive. Only Shinozaki, Satoshi, Kishinuma, and Yuka. As for those who lost their lives there, Seiko, Suzumoto, Morshigi, and Mishishido. Oh, Mishishido, I love you. We came back to find that their very existence was wiped clean from the entire world. Nakashima, hey. I was walking home, defeated and, de and dejected, with the class rep at my side when she suddenly addressed me. It sounded like she wanted to tell me something. I've been doing research these last couple of weeks at the library, looking up information about the Shinozaki estate. That's the house where Ryoshi and Sachiko Shinozaki, uh, Ryoshi and Sachiko Shinozaki lived. The place that, the place that they, wow, I can't even fucking read. The place that the be that the beings in control of Heavenly Host once called home. You might recall that the newspaper articles we found about the kidnapping and murder incident gave precious little information about Sachiko. And aside from the local papers, nobody even bothered covering the news about Yoshi's death at all. Digging up this information was no small feat. She was looking down at her feet and kept a steady, quiet tone the whole time when she was talking. It seemed like she was all leading up. It seems like it was all leading up to something. But she was kind of an expert when it came to ghosts and the occult and such, so I trusted her. I wanted to know where she was going with this. It seems Yoshi Shinozaki's former home is there in the prefecture. It's in the outskirts by the mountains. Her home? Like Yoshi's and Sachiko's? Yep, right in our backyard. It's that close? Yeah, Heavenly Host once stood where Kisaragi is now, after all. And since Yoshi Sinozaki worked there, it makes sense her home wouldn't be too terribly far away. Naho mentioned it in her notes too, remember? That's when she salvaged the original Sachiko's proxy for the ritual. So yeah, seems like a good place for us to find something, don't you think? The origin of the Shinozaki family curse rests within the walls. And I believe there must be some clue there that can help shed light on this. She had my full attention now. I swallowed hard as if I were ta I was taking it all in. Hey, <laughs> hey, taking what in now? I got an address too. If we take the train, we could be there in less than an hour. So what do you say, Nakashima? Let's go check it out right now. The Shinozaki State. Hey, Shark, how's it going? Hope everything's all well with you. I was haunted by my memories of Heavenly Host in this world, in this world, wow, that's not even the word, and this would entail visiting the source of it all, where the danger would be far greater, yet somehow. Lead on, class rat. Lead on, Macduff. It was right around 4.30 in the afternoon. The day was already cooling into night, and the sun would surely be setting shortly after we arrived at our destination. So it'll be the haunting time. The time of the fucking <laughs> life's been shit. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, but just chilling. I know how it feels. He's like, Why are we still here? Just to suffer. <laughs> Every night I feel my arms, <laughs> I feel my arm as if it was there. Oh, Kazuhiro Miller, how we love you so. But neither of us really cared. I just wanted to be there as soon as humanly possible. If there was even the slightest chance of finding answers, I'd welcome it. The two of us went right to the station and hopped on the very next train we could find out to the countryside, grasping at straws for all we were. You know, you know what? 
as a city kid here. How far am I into this game? Uh, we are on, well, I want to say the last chapter, uh, Blood Drive, but I'm not sure it's the last, well, for us it's the last chapter, but I'm not sure if it's the last chapter, because I clicked on a damn thing and it said prologue. Now, why is the prologue all the way at the bottom of the list? I don't know. So I feel like within like an hour, we're going to be done with this. And I'm going to probably play something else. Oopsie. But yeah, as a city kid, I feel like uh, hopping on the train is a scary thing. I'm scared of the train. I'm scared of it. Too much goofiness happens there. There's no regulations on the train. I began to wish I had gone... Wow, I'm having like a hiccup. This is why you don't eat before recording. I began to wish I've gone back to change clothes before I before we left. But if I'd done that, I have, what the fuck is this music playing? Oh my god. This music is so beautiful and loud in my fucking ear. I gotta lower my headset. But if I'd done that, I had to explain to my mom where I was going, and I sincerely down she would I better not get fucking Twitch better not flag this shit for this song. <laughs> I doubt she would have uh, been amenable, amenable, mm, that's a word, to the idea. How's my life been going? It's all right. I'm uh, making do with what I can do. It's a little bit better now that I, now that I got that stimmy, mm, my beautiful, delicious stimulus track that within like a day of having it, fucking $400 already got used on bills. So, so fuck my life. <laughs> I could always just go, uh, well, I can't even read. I could always just gone away, of course, but then I'd be directly disobeying my mother and undoubtedly making her worry sick about me. The class rep and I were seated next to each other on the local, on the local com commuter chain? Commuter. Hmm. Commuter. Commuter. That's the word. Commuter train. I never ridden before. There's only two other passengers. Painfully. It's all right. It's all right. It's good. I'm the dog sitting in the house. I'm like, this is fine. It's all burning around me. Much like us, they were simply staring down at the ground and writing in silence, lost in their own thoughts, wondering what the fuck they were going to eat that night. These last couple of weeks have been brutal. All five of us who survived were feeling it. We were more exhausted than we ever been in our entire lives. But no matter how crazy people said we were, no matter how much our souls ached from the memories, we can never forget Sicko and the others. Why did I say her name like that? I don't know why. Every photo we had of them, though, be it on film or digital, had had its face blackened out completely. And the scariest, saddest thing I could imagine was the pass passage of time, because eventually, I knew I had trouble remembering what they looked like. Can I just say, I'm a little, I'm a little happy. I'm kind of happy that, uh... <laughs> that the art style matured because in the original game man man those sprites made them look super young <laughs> like super super like they looked like 12 year olds <laughs> listen I want to run something by you we're the only ones who have any memory of Miss Yui Shizumoto Shino Shinozara and Morshigi right still dog watching oh she got little pups that's awesome that's amazing me, I had to, uh, the art style has improved greatly. It would then become the template for every other basic anime art style. <laughs> you know that look when you see an anime game and you look at the sprite work and you're like, where, where was this made? What character creator was this made in? What template? Because if you die in Heavenly Host, it's as if you never existed in the first place. You're erased from the collective memory of everyone in the real world. Why, she was bring Why was she bringing this up? I just looked down at my knees, trying unsuccessfully to fight back at the tears that were swelling up in my eyes yet again. Well, have a look at this. We'll take a look inside this book. Naho's nods to the netherworld. It's just the spirit medium girl's blog, right? Wait, hold up. That may- What? If you die in Heavenly Host, all, all memory of you is erased, right? But not Naho's blog. Okay. That's interesting. 
Doesn't anything seem odd about it to you? The blog's final entry was the one details uh, was the one detailing the Sanchiko Ever After ritual, but we already knew that. There was no updates after it because. Wait, didn't Naho die? Right. The class rep nodded and looked looked into my eyes, and then she said. She said, "Kiss me." <laughs> she pulled the Seiko. <laughs> Man, I'm I'm still a little hurt from that chapter. She's all like. She's all like, hey, I love you. And then your character gets up, runs, comes back. All this shit happens. You're like, what? Now who lost her life in Henley Host Elementary School, just like everyone else. But how can that be? I'm not sure of the reason, but this is proof positive. This is proof positive. Is that how you say that? Okay. Proof that not everyone who dies in the school gets erased from existence. That hurt so much. It did. It's like, why are you screaming from me? It's not like I tried to kill you or anything. And then she runs down the steps, gets her head clipped. Ugh. I checked on her mentor, Mr. Kibiki, too. He also died at Hemley Hose, but just like Naho, there's still ample recordings of his existence. Whoa. I was literally on the edge of my seat, leaning in close and hanging on to every word. She flashed me a smile. Only a smile, nothing else. <laughs> so let's not give up hope, okay? All right. I was crying hard now, but for the first time since we came back, I could see the tiniest, faintest glimmer of hope in the darkness. And with that hope, the ghost of Sanchi goes. She's just like, "Ooh, yes, hope. Give it to me, so I can, so I can ruin your fucking day." It wasn't much to go on, but it was easily the best news I've heard in two weeks, and it made me feel a lot better about the impromptu trip. Even just this one vague clue improved our chances of finding something at the Shinozaki estate significant, significantly. It was weird because the word was cut off. I stuttered. At least now we knew what we were looking for. Now arriving, as Ki nah. now arriving at Kishi, Kishi Station. Guess we're here. Man, that fucking ringing in my ear was so loud. Guess we're here. Man, we're really out in the boonies, aren't we? The air smells so... Delicious. I hope you enjoyed the ride. Hmm, it's nice, isn't it? My dog is like clawing at like the flooring in his cage right now because I didn't give him like a fucking shirt or anything to lay on because I don't have anything to give him because he keeps ruining them. So now he's just like scratching at it. I need to find something to give him. Maybe like a towel or something. We should find the estate before it gets too dark. This was the end of the line, a desolate farming community with nothing but farmhouses and fields as far as the eye could see. There was only one main road and due to the mountainside setting of this picture picturesque village, it maintained a gradual upward slope the whole way. Not a lot of people around. Yeah, and here I was kind of hoping I could meet with one of the locals and ask some questions. Evidently, the Shinozaki family had a lot of clout Ooh, they got a lot of clout out here. Ooh. Their SoundCloud? That shit was popping. That shit was popping, popping. <laughs> Had a lot of clout here once. Once. <laughs> and were held in high esteem. <laughs> I'm just thinking of like a bunch of SoundCloud rappers right now. Really, since you're Shinozaki too, I wonder if you have some distant ancestry in common with them or something. That's what I've been wondering since the first game. No one ever bought it up until this moment. Until this very moment in the series. I'm like, huh, you guys really share the last name. I mean, people can share the last name and not be related, but come on. Come on. And you somehow have this connection with the spirit? Get the fuck out of here with this shit. I guess it's possible. But there, but there's an awful lot of Shinozakis in Japan, you know? Yeah, but how many Shinozakis have the fucking spirit powers that you got? Hmm, that's true. So, are we going the right way? I think it's this way, yeah. But to be honest, the address I found didn't have a house number, so I'm not entirely sure. Oh, but what about your cell phone? Doesn't it have the GPS thing? 
Yeah, what about that that GPS thing? It's so new. I don't I don't recall what it is. This is a this is a 2007 game. <laughs> What's this GPS? What's this Pokemon global trading bullshit? Can we use that to figure out where we're going? I already tried, but it looks like there's no map data on the file for this area, which is actually very strange. Not really, it's the countryside. Eh, if you say so. The road was paved the whole way, but it was full of cracks and holes resulting in countless tiny pebbles and patches of sand crunching under our feet. You know, do you ever sit down, like, when you're in a car and you're just going down the highway and you're like, Who the fuck sat here and made this road? How painful was that? Who comes out and fixes these roads? Who does that? How did it get here? Don't think about it too hard, it just exists. <laughs> and the darker it got, the more unnoticeable the sound of the uneven terrain became. There was something unsettling about the idea of two schoolgirls in uniform walking through a strange, largely deserted village at the cusp of twilight. Imagine the first highway. Exactly. You know, it's like whenever you, uh... I guess, like, when you watch, like... I never... Sacrilege here. I never watched an Indiana Jones movie, but I'm assuming that this is an Indiana Jones movie. Um... Something like that, where, like, you see them in the forest, and there, there's, like, this big fucking... There's this big cliffside, and it's, like, this fucking real dinky-ass bridge. It's like, who made that bridge? Who made that? How'd that get there? How'd they... How'd they get to the other side? How'd they get to both sides and put that bridge up? Did someone, like, stand on one side and said, All right, I'm gonna toss it to you! Assuming it's in an Indian Jones movie. Well, yeah. It's always, you always see those bridges in, like, adventure movies where, like, it's someone in a jungle looking for some treasure or some shit, and then they fuck with the... Someone fucks with the goddamn bridge, and then it collapses. And then they gotta climb up it Nathan Drake style. Hey, I really think we should stop and ask someone for directions. How about we pay the house a visit? She was pointing out one of the isolated farmhouses directly in front of us. Shrek. Oh, yeah. You know what? I don't really remember much from the first Shrek movie. I don't think anybody does. <laughs> but you do remember the fact that apparently Donkey fucked a dragon. They got babies. Don't know how that happened, but okay. How'd he do that? <laughs> Sounds good. It's getting dark after all. Let's pick up the pace. <laughs> I do. See, I remember Shrek 2 and 3. Mostly the ending of three, and mostly two because I don't care what anyone says, in terms of animation and cinematography and camera angles and all that jazz, the scene in Shrek Two when they're fucking uh, invading the castle. That's one of the that's one of the best scenes in movie history. I don't give a fuck what anyone says. It's so goddamn good. Hello. Maybe they're not home. Let's try someplace else. Okay. <laughs> the end of Strike 2 gives you shivers. You mean... You mean when they're singing Livin' La Vida Loca? <laughs> Wait. That ending? Donkey and Poots are singing? Poots? Did I just call them Poots? I put, I put Boots and Puss together and I put Poots. That's what he got. That scared the crap out of me. What was that? Yeah, I don't like this. Let's get away from here. The invasion at the end. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. When they invade the castle. Yeah. Strike two. They invade the castle. You know? They head to the Muffin Man. They get the Muffin Man to make the giant gingerbread man. And then fucking, and then the fairy godmother, she's like, C minor, put it in C minor. She starts singing. And they're like fucking up the soldiers and shit. Everybody looks beautiful. <laughs> I know it's a little unsettling, but if we don't get some information, we'll never find the place. So here, uh, so come on, let's try asking that one. Are we in a fucking ghost town? 
This time she was pointing at a strangely more inviting looking residence, uh, residence nearby, sporting a blue roof. Hello? Hello, is anyone home? Yes. Oh. Good evening, miss. We're a bit lost, and we'll be grateful if you can help us find our way. I can see the figure of a middle-aged woman through the, through, the, uh, through the frosted glass. I couldn't read for some reason. I wasn't sure if she was actually going to open it for us, given that we were strangers and she was, by all appearances, a woman alone in an isolated house. What is this, then? Oh, good evening. I'm sorry to bother you, but have you heard about our great lord and savior? <laughs> she just slams the door in front of him. I'm sorry to bother you of late. We've come all the way from Fujisawa, and we're trying to find a certain residence. Oh my, what cute little visitors. And coming all the way from the sun going down, no less. From the sun going down, with the sun coming down, no less. <laughs> Thank goodness. She seemed like a perfectly normal, perfectly kind old woman, and then her head turned 80 degrees. <laughs> I, took my, I took my place next to the class rep and bowed my head in respect. So where is it you're trying to do, then? I'm trying to reach this address, but I don't have the house number. This is all I know. Let's see. What business do you have at the Shinazaki estate? Um, actually, we're investigating something, right? Oh yeah, that's right. It's his first school assignment. The old lady's demeanor changed in an instant. She made herself as large as she could and began pushing us out of her house. What? Miss, is something wrong? Get out! Get the fuck out of here. Get out. Get out. Get out of my house. Gone. Be gone with you. What? Just all seriousness, like her face turns, she's like, get out. Get out now. <laughs> what was that all about? Just seeing the word Shinozaki state seemed to send her off the deep end. Good thing you didn't tell her your last name was Shinozaki. She would have fucking grabbed a knife and stabbed the shit out of you. This could be a problem. I'm getting real Resident Evil 4 vibes here. <laughs> it's like this village is all fucked up. The day was fading fast. The sky was still blue for now, but it was getting darker by the minute. Street lights were popping on all around us. Let's just try and find another house. There must be someone around here who will tell us what we need to know. Yeah, you think. Hmm? That old lady is still standing there, right inside the door. Look at her, she's creeping. Oh god, you're right. Why is she just watching us? Let's go, okay? This is getting real creepy. Listen. Listen. Hear me out here. These two, they survived the first game. After that experience, when you head into a village and by the mention of the fucking name Shinozaki Estate, you get pushed out of a house, that's when you pick up your shit and you're like, okay, there's some real shit going on down here. <laughs> this is, this is not good. She seemed like such a kind old woman too when she first answered the door, but now she felt menacing. The sudden change was almost staggering. 6.30, huh? Yeah. We walked for quite a while after that. The fields and trees were becoming more plentiful while houses were becoming much rarer sight. The road inclined had gotten a lot steeper, too. Girls somehow don't got no street smarts. I know. I don't get it. By the way, I want to point out while I'm playing this right now, in the background, I have Sonic X playing on my fucking TV. So I get glimpses of Sonic every now and then. <laughs> we were literally climbing a mountain now. And the likelihood of finding the house we thought, uh, we fought, we saw it, or any house at all, seems to be lessening with every step. Ah, car coming, watch out. Thanks. And then she gets ran over, game over, the end, dead. We pushed ourselves against the guardrail and waited for the car approaching from behind to pass before we continue our trek. But it never passed us. <laughs> It just stood there. Oh, an older man. Hey there. <laughs> just like a, I just imagine like a trucker. Fucking wheat hanging out of his mouth. Sonic's there for support. Of course he is. <laughs> just sitting there with wheat hanging out of his mouth. He's like, hey there. What's a couple of schoolgirls doing in a place like this, huh? It's dangerous to be walking in the road, you know. Some strangers out here. Including me. <laughs> 
The mini pickup pulled along. Of course, it's a fucking pickup. The mini pickup pulled along, uh, pulled alongside us. An older gentleman stuck his head out the window. He seemed like a sociable sort. That's not. Nah. -uh. Nope. Um, we're actually looking for the Shinozaki resonance. If you have any idea where it is, Shinozaki. Yeah, the old Shinozaki. He's not even saying there. He's saying Shinzaki. <laughs> Shinzaki State. It's up that way, deep into the mountain, where no one can hear you scream. Do you, do you want me to go with you for, for moral support? I mean, no one else seems to be around. <laughs> Just up ahead? Yep. Well, that's good. We've been going to the right, we've been going the right way after all. Yeah, but it's way up there. I mean, way up there, like all the way in the back of the forest where no one can hear you. You sure you don't want me to go with you? You sure? I mean, you can you can just hop in my pickup truck right now. You sure you don't want me to? You sure? All right. Just, you know, just just a guy offering some advice. <laughs> if Youngins is <laughs> if Youngins is walking, it's going to take you a good long while. Don't know what business you got in a place like that, but hop in if you want. Oh god, he really did it. He really did it. He's like what a couple of schoolgirls doing out here by yourselves at night heading towards the woods I just imagine this guy just like raising his eyebrows like multiple times and they still don't get it this class rep uh, the class rep and I looked another square in the eyes he seemed a little shady but it was getting pretty late and as that they say beggars can't be choosers we wouldn't get another opportunity like this so we thanked the old man and got in his truck. Oh my fucking god. You don't do that. Okay, alright, never mind. He, listen, he does look trustworthy. I will say that. I thought he had more of a hick look to him. But still. But still, I don't. Like, look, look at Shinozaki. She's not having none of this goofiness right now. She's all like, why am I? Why am I here? <laughs> She's like, why did I get myself in this situation? These girls have no street smarts who raised them. I mean, listen, even though he looks trustworthy, still a random dude, right? Heh, <laughs> truck's supposed to be a three-seater, but it's kind of crowded. Sorry about that. Why don't you, uh, why don't you sit on my lap for more space? <laughs> That's quite all right. We're very grateful. If we keep on walking, it would have been nighttime before we knew it. Well, I'm sure I ain't got... I'm sure he ain't got a lot of business up at this old Shinozaki estate on the mountain these days. Where are you two looking to go up there? Well, it's not really, uh, I'm not really sure how to put this. Let's just say there's some information we're trying to find. Information? About a nurse who used to live there a long time ago, a woman named Yoshi Shinozaki. Yeah, back in the day, it used to be a home-run clinic. It did. Lots of people went up there all the time. But nobody goes near it anymore. Don't know what kind of shape it'll be in. We just kept driving further up the mountain path. And the higher we got, the, ru the rougher the ride became. Road maintenance was clearly not a priority here. With four tires on four different elevations at any given point in time, the whole truck was being rocked to its core. After everything they've been through, they're surprisingly, surprisingly trusting. Yeah, I know, right? It's like, it's like, you, <laughs> you know, this is a moment, this is the moment where I love how they're there and they're like, it's getting late and it's all the way back there. We're still going to have to make the train home at this point. Even if you, even if you are kind of brain dumb, right? You just go like, you know what? Let's pick this up on the weekend. How about that? When we actually have time to do this shit. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Just glad I'm wearing a seatbelt. This is quite the road, isn't it, mister? The old man's driving was starting to frighten me. I could see Ayumi's head bouncing up and down. And it's always felt like we were in a runaway vehicle. I wonder why. He's like, picked up two girls. <laughs> All the way in the woods. Mister? Aren't you going a little too fast, like you're trying to get away from the cops or something? Huh? What happened? 
My heart was beating a mile a minute. That was a person on the road, wasn't it? Class rep and I had both gone pale. We looked over at the old man. It's okay. Whatever it was, I didn't hit it. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> what just happened? So, like, a ghost appeared in the road, and he's all like, I didn't hit it. But, I love how he's just like, it's alright. Meanwhile, two seconds ago, they're like, aren't you driving a little too fast? And he's not saying anything. That's pretty weird. What? Believe me, I hit a person, an animal on the road, it makes a bigger noise than that. How would you know that? This old man seems to have gone a little weird now as well. As much as I like the old woman in town, he start he started off so kind and helpful. <laughs> he started off so kind and helpful. Who was that in the road? I don't know. Hey, in a line, can't go any further by car. You're gonna have to hoof it. You going or <laughs> you going or you want me to drive you back? I love how they didn't say. Okay, they did. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bus Driver. Thank you. Thank you, Bus Driver. <laughs> right. I love... I thought for a moment they were just, like, getting out the car and slamming the door and just walking away. They're like, I'm done with this. I'm done with this. Bye. I'll be waiting here for you. Just come back when you're done. I can't rightly leave two of you girls out here by themselves, after all. <laughs> Especially where no one can hear you scream. They come back out the house, and he's all like, Oh no, someone slashed my tires right in front of me. I guess we're stuck out here for the night. Class rep, you okay? That was scary. That was definitely something... There's definitely something strange about him, but he said he'll wait for us, so I think he's a good person when it counts. I mean... I mean, Freddy Cougar said the same thing too, right? Don't worry, I'll wait for you. I'll be right here. Like, I don't think he's a good guy. Yeah, I guess you're right. I guess. The sun was setting rapidly. Uh, was setting rapidly. And evening was full. Was full. Wow. Evening was full in stride. Still can't even say it right. And at the top of this, uncom uncomprised. Uncompri mm -hmm. I can't read uncompromisingly is that even a fucking word what is that steep road set yoshi shinazaki's home and clinic oh look it plateaus up ahead and that's the place we finally made it is this there's nothing here this had to be the place the side of the shinazaki state but there was no house here anymore the building was torn down it was still an empty lot and after, we came all this way, too. Wait, hold up. Look over there. Is that a barn? You're right. I wonder why this is separate. If the estate wasn't... It was a small barn on the edge of the property. And remarkably, when I flipped the light switch, the lights actually came on. It still had electricity. Is this possible? Yeah. It's kind of... Wait. It still had electric... Are, are there any, like, wires up there or anything? You don't see any, like... It's just a shed. With lights and... Uh, I guess. Alright, yeah. It's kind of giving me the creeps. Despite our misgivings, we go on... Uh, we've gone far outside of our comfort zone to get here. So we're set about searching this mysterious barn for any answers. You know what? This is the moment where you go... Alright. Alright, hold up. We're just going to go back, come back here on the weekend, maybe get, maybe at least get fucking, uh, what's his face to come and help us. I forgot his fucking name already. Main character, main character of the damn series, or what I assume to be the main character. The basic looking generic anime protagonist. It's a large drum that seems to have been used once for burning waste products. Or dead bodies. <laughs> Nothing but soot and ash inside. I wonder what was burned in there. I don't know. Looks like plain old ashes to me. But it could have been anything. Like body parts. There's a mess of old cardboard boxes here. Along with a rusted toolbox and any number of other odds and ends. 
There doesn't seem to be anything particularly useful in here. Or on or among any of them, however. Hey, look. This box has Shinozaki written on it. You're right. I guess that means this really was Yoshi Shinozaki's house at some point. It's an old worn-out blanket that someone seemed to have left here. Somebody from the outside must have sought shelter in here at some point. Oh yeah, maybe. I guess it's just getting out of the wind isn't always enough. And brr, it's starting to get kind of cold in here. With the sun down and all. Yep. I'm starting to get kind of like... I highly doubt that this is what, what actually is, but I'm starting to get some like... Some feelings that Sachiko is like Yoshi's illegitimate child or something like that. And she's all like, I have to hide her in the barn, in the shed. Huh. I'm pretty sure that's not what happened, but I just have the feeling, you know? What the fuck else am I looking for here? We checked the box. We checked that. Hmm. What am I missing? Alright, well. Seems to be a mess of cardboard boxes. Yep. It's a hemp sack that's filled to the brim with some kind of grain. Probably feed for farm animals. Guess they had chickens or something here. Yep. We spent another half hour or so rifling through the barn from floor to ceiling, looking for anything we could possibly find that might help us. Also, I just realized, everyone sat there, basically saw a ghost in the middle of the road, and they're like, huh, guess it's nothing. And then the dude driving the car is like, you know what, I'm gonna stay here in the middle of the road. I'll wait for you. And now like a half hour has passed? That man's dead. That man's dead. Ain't no way. I don't see a, I don't see a single thing in here that sheds any light on Yoshi or Sanchi Shinazaki at all. It's full on, it's full on night outside too. And we keep the old man waiting any, uh, we kept the old man waiting long enough. Seems like a waste to leave here empty handed. But we done all we could for today. At least it was at least it was time to start heading home. Can't believe all that's left is a barn. Yep. That sucks. We should come back tomorrow a little earlier. I like to try taking uh, taking in more of the taking in. Talking to more of the locals. Why am I having a hard time reading this? One time me and my friend both thought we saw a ghost and we immediately started joking about it. Fuck that! Yeah, to me, I'm like, you see that? See, I'm the type of guy where I used to take, like, walks at night, right? And I live in a pretty dangerous area. But I would take the less dangerous paths. You know, sometimes you walk in the street and you'll just see, like, a pit bull by itself walking at night. And every time, I would just be like, you know what? I'm gonna stay on my side of the road. You stay over there. We're good. And nothing ever happened. But if I ever saw a ghost or something, I'm fucking... I'm fucking just... If I, like... A pit bull walking in the street by itself? Don't bother me. I'll just walk by it. It, w it don't pay me no mind. But if I saw, like, someone just walking towards me, right? Or even just walking away from me like a person, I'm just like, nope, not happening. I'm just turn around and head back home. <laughs> Sounds like a plan. It felt like the sun had been setting forever, but now it was nowhere in sight. The wooden mountains all around us were cloaked in a veil of darkness. What if we both saw it appear? Be a white orb slash little boy that dashed by? What the fuck? White orb? I can be like, you know what? I'm saying shit. A little boy? I'm like, nah, no. I'm like, nah, that's a... Uh, that's the boy in the, the boy in the striped pajamas right there. He's uh, he's coming back with a vengeance. Still looking for, still looking for that kid's dad. <laughs> All right. There weren't any lights to help our gu uh, help guide our path either, so we really couldn't see where we were going. Man, it's dark. Was this the way we came? We need to find our way back to the. Are you guys literally lost in the fucking woods? We need to find our way back to the road. I think this is it, though. Since I remember just walking straight towards the barn. Class rep, look. That guy's super dead. Oh. Oh, this is, this is the moment where it all comes flashing in your head. You see this scene and you're like, I fucked up. You're like, I fucked up. Oh, no. 
Nestled among the branches, just beyond a small grove of trees, the inside lights of the tiny truck shone light, shone like a beacon in the night. It's the old man's truck. Yeah, it has to be, thank goodness. I didn't much like the idea of getting stranded in the woods. There was something oddly fulfilling about getting out of, getting out and actually doing something. Success or no, it felt so much more fruitful than moping about at home. I didn't care if this was a fool's errand, as long as I just kept looking. Day after day, I felt like I could, I could move on. It wasn't hope, it was purpose. Sicko taught me that. Sorry to keep you waiting, huh? Oh no, the man's gone. <laughs> Their plan in the first place was being stranded in the woods. Was it not? Yeah, real talk, they were gonna walk all the way up here. And then they were gonna have to... First of all, it's nighttime. How the fuck are they even getting home? It's the countryside. I, I'm assuming that trains don't run all night in the countryside. At this point, they can't even make it home. Wait, where's the old man? Maybe we were gone too long for him? I mean, it is cold, but maybe he had to, you know, take a piss. She began distracting her head and blushing a bit, clearly embarrassed at the suggestion. What? Just say the guy gotta take a piss, unless you're thinking he's doing something else. Oh yeah, maybe. Well, he left the engine running, so he should be back. Let's just wait for him. It's so chilly out here, though. My stomach's freezing. It's... That's the first thing that freezes to you, your stomach? Not your hands, not your... Not your cheeks, nothing. My stomach is cold. Alright, just making sure. <laughs> I'm sure he wouldn't mind if we wait inside the truck, right? That's true. Okay, then class, class reps first. Huh? No good, it's locked. Well, that sucks. Guess we don't have much of choice. Let's just wait out here. It's so cold outside. What time is it anyways? 8.17. About the right time for a cold night air, really. The old man's not coming back. Is he? So what do we do? That man went... He probably went to take a piss, but in doing so, got killed by the ghost. It was so dark we couldn't even see the road, and climbing all the way back, and climbing all the way back down would require far more of a hike than we were prepared for. Start walking. <laughs> Time to start walking. Oh god, look at all these fucking saves I have. Time to get it going, you know? Think of something else. Start walking. Well, this is the worst option ever. <laughs> Walk? Like, let's be on. Let me get in the head of the, of the Japanese, of the fucking, the great land of Nippon, right? In any Western movie, this is the point where people would start walking. But in Japan, they're like, you know what? No, I have hope. There's got to be something else. I noticed this when we were in the, tr uh, when we were in the truck coming up here, but there's an awful lot of spots along the road where the guardrail is out. There were indeed. I could easily imagine being blissfully unaware that we were near the edge of the road, then slipping and falling down the mountain. And since there's no lights, walking seems pretty dangerous, don't you think? You have a point. We should probably just keep waiting if the old man is off doing his business. Then he'll probably be back any minute, anyways. Walks away from a perfectly good running car. I'm suggesting neither of them know how to drive at all, which isn't that surprising because they live in a fucking... A, they live in Japan in which most people don't even have cars because the transit is so fucking good. And B, fucking, uh... They also come from the city, which people most definitely don't have any cars. And they're also like, what, 16, 17 years old, something like that? Second years? So they're probably 17. It's so like, I'm assuming no, they don't know how to drive, right? Also, the doors are locked in the car. Now, they can easily break the windows. But, you know. Why would a lady do that? <laughs> She's a girl. Why would she do that? Come on, think with your head. <laughs> it is cold, but I say we wait. 
you know, unless you're Jolene, you're Jolene Cujo, where she just goes like, fuck it, I'm taking the car. <laughs> it's mine. So we waited, and eventually a half hour had passed, still no sign of the old man returning. Where on earth could he be? I don't think he's coming back. But he even left the engine running. The only sound either of us could hear is the dense dark forest was that uh, in this dense dark forest was that of the truck's engine idly away. I idling? Idly? What the hell's wrong with me? So what do we do? At this rate, we'll never get home. Phone's out of range, so we're fucked. I guess our only choice is Nakashima. What do you th wait, what? Oh, I guess our only choice is... Nakashima, what do you think about returning to the barn? I mean, it's got a light at least. Why the barn? Well, if we can't get back down the mountain tonight, we should at least take shelter and rest until morning, don't you think? It just seems safer than staying here. In the haunted barn. In the barn owned by the family of the ghost that our friends died in her weird time warp school shit. So we're gonna spend the night. I shudder at the thought of spending the whole night on this cold dark mountain. But she was right. We really didn't have much of a choice. No you do. No you do. You have you have a choice. Hey Breezy, how's it going? That is logic. It is sound logic. I agree with her. This is what the only real course of action that made sense. Or or hear me out on this one. Right? You can just break the car and just you know, it would be way more dangerous for them, right? I'm assuming that the road they came up on is, like, up the side of a mountain, right? You know, one of those, like, car commercials and shit, where it's, like, you can die at any moment. So them taking the car would probably be the worst idea ever. Safer than staying here? Yeah, I just get a bad feeling from this road, from this whole mountain, really. It's like there's some kind of presence. And our best bet for dealing with this is to go someplace well lit and get out of the elements. I mean, you're the one who, who can communicate with ghosts, so go ahead. You feel a presence? Is it something we should be afraid of? I don't, I don't know. I'm not even sure if it's a person or something else. And it could be one presence or many. You seem really calm about this. Really, like, calm about this. All I can really say is we're being watched. Okay, then let's hurry up and get back to the barn. Finding ourselves left with no other choice, we put the road behind us and began walking up the dirt path leading back to the Shinazaki family's barn. However... Was the barn this far from the road before- Oh my god, did we enter the fucking Lost Woods? Are we gonna become Stalfoses now? Or Star- or Stall Children or whatever the fuck they're called? This is weird. It's really weird. It's like the road leading to it just up and vanished. Does this mean... Wait, don't wander off! Uh, sorry, come on, let's try retracing our steps. We'll just turn around and go back the way we came. Sounds good to me. Oh, you guys are fucked. We're going the right way, aren't we? Shouldn't we be seeing the road soon? Where are we? Oh god, no, we're lost. Lost in the middle of the damn forest! What? Yes, we were definitely lost. There was literally nothing but con... Confu... I... what? I can't even say the word. I don't even know what word, what word that is. Instead of saying it, I'm now gonna take a... Gingerly sip from my water. slow and painful. The way I like it. As far as the eye could see, in, in every direction, dark looming trees. Their tall, thin forms were so sexy. I mean, what? Their tall, thin forms were casting a web of shadow. That's a, that's a Spider-Man game. <laughs> all along the, <laughs> all along the mountainside, observing our, vi obscuring our vision of anything at all outside, at all outside our, wait, what? Obscuring our visions of anything at all outside our immediate surroundings. Did I have a stroke? Reading that? What happened? Obscuring our vision of anything at all outside. 
What the fuck? Alright, whatever. Don't you have a compass on your phone? Yeah, but it won't work. It uses GPS. Oh, it does. Why can't this stupid thing get any location data? God, what good is it if it... What good is it if it craps out? I mean, when I need it the most. Excuse me? Land off living. Huh? Did you just hear a voice? I couldn't make out what it was saying, but yeah. That sounded like a person. Maybe it was just the wind in the trees, though. At any rate, we need to find our way off this mountain. Do you have any ideas? I mean, we shouldn't just wander aimlessly. That's true. If we got lost in the mountains, we... They say you should never head towards the low ground. I didn't know that. The best course of action is probably just to stay in place and wait for daybreak. But it's cold, and we have no tent, and maybe if we huddle together... I like the sound of that. I like that idea. Can we do that idea? I like it. Can we do that one? I like that one. That's fine. She's like, yeah, that's fine. That's good. But um, I'm, I'm good to walk at least a little longer. So how about we keep at it a bit? If we get near, if we get near enough to the road, we might see the truck. Okay. I swear we walk right by those trees already. But there's no way we could be walking in circles, is there? Everything looked the same up here, no matter where we went. We both began to wonder if we were making any progress at all. Huh? What is it? Over there, I heard something. Where? Where was it? God, what's next? What was that? It was the Wendigo. That's what it was. We kept clinging to the faint hope that we might soon emerge from these endless woods, but all that got us was a good two hours worth of slogging. The rough terrain was killing our legs and our stamina had been worn down to the bone. I can't move anymore. The class rat plopped herself down onto a bed of dry leaves on the ground, and just as she did, Whoa, Class Rep, look up there. Huh? Huh? Beyond the silhouette of the of the many config config configures config what the fuck? I don't even know that word. At the edge of our vision, a faint light sh could uh could be seen. We're saved. <laughs> it's a rock. The pioneer used to ride these babies for miles. Thank you, Nishiyama. Thank you for noticing that. No problem. Let's go. We were both dead tired, and our legs hurt like hell, but we forgot all about that at the sight of a possible salvation and just took off running. As it happened, the barn we'd been looking for all this time was the source of the light. Those naked light bulbs shone like light beacons in the sky. Thank God. What's the barn? I thought it was going to be the old man's truck. Yeah, me too. But this is even better. The barn is what we were looking for, after all. Did they turn off the lights in the barn when they left? Because if they did, and you came back and the lights were on, that's a moment of like, I'm not sure about that one. But I don't remember leaving the lights on. There you go. There you go. Right? We should have shut them off. Yeah, but it's certainly possible we didn't. Well, if we're the ones who left them on, and just saved our own asses, I guess I should think... I guess I should thank goodness for small favors. What? <laughs> All we had to do was push through some undergrowth as tall as we were, and then we'd be there. Seems we seems somehow seems we somehow circled around the wow, I can't even read. Around to the back of the lot. We made it. Let's go inside, shall we? Sure. Man, just having light makes it all the difference in the world, doesn't it? My phone clock was sh showing that it was past 10:40. I started thinking about home, and about how much my mom must be worrying now. Feeling a bit saddened, I, hes I hesitated at the barn door, when all of a sudden... The class rep let out a nearly voiceless cry of absolute shock. She was, star 
She was staring into the darkness just past the building and shuddering in tears. In tears? In terror. My bad. What's wrong? Nishikiya. Nish uh, Nish oh, I can't even say her name. Nakashima. Look right next to the barn. Huh? What I saw there was something that couldn't be. Something far beyond my imagination and comprehension alike. Is it the dead guy? Oh no, it's a ghost building! We're fucked. We're fucked. We should have stayed home. We should have never we should have never questioned the life we were given. That's how can that There where the Shinozaki estate once stood, it was nothing more than an abandoned lot only a few hours earlier. An old humble an old humble residence now rose above. It seemed almost to be floating in the air. But it was very clearly an actual corporeal building. The two of us stood there staring at it for several minutes, completely dumbfounded. <laughs> like what the fuck? Why? Why isn't it? It wasn't. It wasn't there in the evening, was it? It wasn't. It definitely wasn't. But so why is it there now? How should I know? I had goosebumps all over my body, and a cold sweat had began to. Ugh. This is why you don't eat before recordings. I'm getting like these hiccups. A cold sweat had began tracing lines down my back. Is it just me, or is it just, or is it glowing? We, what are we even looking at? Aside from its more eth ether- Oh god, I can never say this word properly. Ethereal qualities. It was just an old, upbeat two-story farmhouse. But sure enough, the name played by the door read Shinozaki. This was without a doubt the house where Yoshi and Sachiko Shinozaki lived. Are you okay? Oh god, you're hyperventilating! You alright? The class rep raised a hand and stopped me from in intervening. I'm okay, but thank you. I just have to keep my mouth closed. And it all passed. What? Okay. You good? Hey, Nagashima. I think now's our chance. What? We came here to learn the secrets of the Shinozaki estate. And well, we're, here we are. It's inviting us in. It's daring us to look. I don't trust you. I don't trust you no more. You literally just, you literally just had like a whole ass panic attack in front of me. And now you're all like, yo, want to like go inside that ghost house? What's going on with that? You mean go in there? I know, it's really scary, but we can't turn back now. No, I think we can. I think we, I think we can. I think we can just ignore it. Gazing at the imposing structure, she took a deep breath. Then after... I had a yawn. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, full 180. Exactly. You're like, nah, nah. You're you're up to some shit. Are you possessed by a ghost? I think you're possessed by a ghost. Then after collecting herself, she walked right up to the front door and try sliding it open. It gave no resistance at all. Let's go. Wait. Are you not? Are you not observing the fact that we literally just got out of a fucked up school? <laughs> It's only been like a week. No good. The Phantom Estate House had no power, it seems. I wonder why. The barn still have it. Oh god. Why am I yawning? The barn still had working lights, but not the main house. It's a fucking ghost house. What do you expect? What? That was stupid. You're like, how come this doesn't have any lights? I know it's like floating in midair, but... Uh? <laughs> Fortunately, there was a flashlight on a nearby table. The class rep picked up... It's a ghost flashlight. The class rep picked it up and switched it on, illuminating the wall across from the entrance. Nice enough that the ghost house provided us a ghost flashlight. Great. Not that there was much to see. The entrance itself was extremely small, breaking off to the right of the solid wooden door just a few steps in... Just a few steps in. A quick pan to the left, then revealed the steep hardwood staircase leading up, and it was pretty much the entire room. Be careful, the energy in here is strong. You're sending me mixed signals, Ayumi. What the fuck? 
She gone completely pale. I could just tell by looking at her that she seemed that she sensed something. Her eyes shone with a mixture of terror and determination. It's much darker than Heavenly Host. The energy in this house is jet black. Really? Don't let your guard down. Not for one second. Why are you excited by this? What's going on? What happened? Thinking back to our first steps into this house, basically the start of it all, it was at the point that we left the world on, of the ordinary far behind. Why did they go inside the house? I don't know. They came here to find answers as to what the deal is with their friends not being remembered. Right? They came here to find some clues. Then they're in here with some ghost shit. Listen, I just went and question it. I'm like, listen, my friends sacrificed themselves. And by sacrifice themselves, I meant they went and got themselves killed. But I'm alive, right? I wouldn't go back. I'd be like, I'm sorry. It's not happening. Simply being able to see these walls, these floors, these ceilings, with our naked eye directly defied the laws of nature. The ghost itself, uh, the ghost itself, the house itself was a ghost. Literally anything could happen in here. I knew that. And I was doing everything I could to brace myself for the trials ahead, but the fear was still there, and the shaking wouldn't stop. I'm literally trying to- f as I'm reading, I'm fighting back this yawn I have, right? Because I don't know why I have a yawn now for some reason, but now I'm yawning. I don't really know how to explain it, but there's something like a literal wave of emotional turmoil cutting right through the air in here. It's pretty deeply in uh, ingrated. <clears throat> ingrated too. I wonder what happened before this place was torn down. I don't know. Maybe the fact that kids were kidnapped and killed? And the family has some ties to this shit? Or that the mo mother was being molested by the principal or something? Like... You literally figured all this shit out in the first game. The staircase is very plain and the stairs themselves are exceptionally steep. There's also quite old and seem to have absorbed a good deal of moisture, so it would be best to take care of- <sighs> Ugh! Fucking yawns! Take care when climbing them. Alright, cool. The door isn't locked, nor is it sealed shut like the school, but it still won't open. There seems to be something heavy blocking it from the other side. Yeah, that's just a ghost. That's just an evil ghost. The shoe shelf was full of dead rats, and each one of them, without exception, had a stomach dug out. Maybe they ate each other? Hopefully they ate each other. Or maybe someone else ate them? There's a ghost in here. We're fucked. We're fucked. There's a ghost. Oh, what? Oh. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. All right. Okay. Dead ghost rat. Huh, now that you mention it, yeah, dead ghost rats. Is there a ghost making me yawn a lot? I hope not. Look at this question mark room. The stairs? Let's go on the stairs. Maybe we'll see a little Asian boy staring at us. Grudge style. These stairs still don't feel safe. Ow. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. The floorboards here are pretty well rotted through. Be really careful. Best to hang on to the wall for leverage as you go. It's so weird. This is a house that shouldn't even exist. But we can touch everything. We can pick it all up. It's, it's all real. I seem to recall reading about cases before... Wow. Reading about cases before where the house itself is basically just a spiritual echo. But this seems totally different. Huh. Guess we're heading into the bedroom. Right? Alright, gang. Me and Daphne will go check out the bedroom. Shaggy, Velma, and Scoob? I don't know. Go fuck each other somewhere. I don't care. <laughs> this particular bedroom looks like it's been converted into a study. Seems out of seems out of place, considering the family who studied... Who studies was it? Maybe the father? Must be a father, right? The desk is piled high with the... Well, I said maybe the father. The mom was a teacher, so... It would make sense for her to have a study. The desk is piled high... Whoa, where the fuck did my voice go? Hold up. <clears throat> Get back here, voice. Where are you going? 
The desk is piled high with dust, but the items situ uh, situated on it are neat and tidy. Whoever's used it was very organized. Eh? Right in the middle of the desk sits a lone key, completely covered in dried blood. Take it? Sure, why not? Acquired key. Wait, do you hear something? Oh, my death? Sounded like footsteps echoing through the wooden frame of the house. Specifically, like someone with leather shoes walking around on the first floor. Fuck that noise. Class rep and I looked at one another and shuddered. After a moment, the footsteps then began loudly stomping up the stairs. It's coming towards us. Hide in a fucking, I don't know, jump through the window, something. We have to hide. We scrambled against the wall of the room, leaving the door ever so slightly ajar so we could survey the staircase. Huh? There really is something in here with us. Something walking around the halls. God, I can't take this anymore. The constant, un the constant unrelenting present pressure of this search was beginning to take its toll on me. The class rep, sensing my agitation, took my hand in hers. Keep it together. Oh, excuse me. Hold up. The one who hyperventilated at the moment of seeing the ghost house is telling me to calm down? What the fuck? What, what's going on? Keep it together, Nagashi, huh? Stay strong. Remember, Heavenly Host. If we allow... Remember, Heavenly Host? Remember that? Don't... <laughs> I love, I love how she's like, keep calm. By the way, while you're keeping calm, remember all those times we almost died? <laughs> if we allow these holes to form in our hearts, we'll just fall prey to the darkening. You're right, thank you. Remember that time when I called you a whore out of nowhere? <laughs> you whore? <laughs> like what? I'll never forget that. No longer anything of interest in here. So can I go? Is it safe to go? Bookshelves is full of old books that have been thoroughly wrecked with age. Every one of them is yellow, musty, and falling apart. Oh, that sucks. Sucks to be the book, right? I guess we'll head to the other bedroom. Are we safe to even go? The door's locked. But it looks like the key from the other room fits. Sure. This is... There are photos of Sachiko all over the room. Virtually everywhere, there was uh, there was space for them. Her mother clearly held her very dear. Huh. Pictures of Sachiko are sprawled out across the surface of the desk. However, like so many objects in Heavenly Homes, they're fixated to the surface, as if they were mere decorations. They can't be picked up or even moved. There's a tiny kimono in the box, size for a young girl. The style looks similar to those worn in, in, in Shichi, God, Shichi Gosan Festival, which would make this Sachiko's for sure. Okay. Huh. That don't look, uh, that don't look normal. So what's this now? It appears to be an embe embedded wall safe with a circular padlock and a panel of buttons comprised of the digits 0 through 9. Let me see. This looks almost like some kind of vault, doesn't it? Isn't that what she just fucking said? Not only said it, but she clearly detailed the ever-living shit out of it. She's like, it even has digits from 0 to 9. We tried pressing buttons at random, hoping to open the, uh, the lock by pure chance, but that didn't do a thing. Following the spin- following- wait, what? Following the spin clockwise indicator etched into the steel safe, we tried spinning the lock itself as well, but had no luck with that either. In fact, as soon as the lock made one full rotation, all the buttons were pressed and, and suddenly popped back out. So we're dealing with the combination lock safe surrounded by photos of Sachiko from when she was still alive. If Yoshi is the one who set the combination, it's probably safe to assume that it's something to do with Sachiko. You know, you're absolutely right. It must be some real, th uh, something real simple. However, uh, whoever used the safe, We've chosen something they wouldn't forget after all. The question is, what would that something be, her birthday? We tried a handful of different combinations based on homonyms, rhyming, and other like that. 
But every time we just spin the lock, hear a metallic, hear a oh god, metallic thunk, and watch as the numbers reset upon us. Sachiko, come on, think. We made it back from Heavenly Host Elementary School, so there must be some tidbit of knowledge we can use. What we had actually learned about Sachiko, though, number wise, all I could come up with is approximate height. That didn't work. What about the kimono? That was from Sachiko's, uh, that's from Shinto Sachi. Got Chichigo-san Festival for children of ages 7, 5, and 3. Age 5 is just for boys, if I recall correctly, and Sachiko was a little older than 3. A lot of photos, so how about Sachiko's age? 7? It was long shot, but... Hey, I got it. Wow, nice job, Nakashima. Na Can you just call her Naomi? Just call Fuck it, I'ma call her Naomi. Fuck you, Ayumi. Stop calling her by her last name. It's a mouthful. The area of the walls all... <clears throat> the area of the wall all around the safe opened up like a secret door, with a combination lock holding in place and sever ser severing... Serving as a doorknob. Huh? Beyond the tiny door, the door so small that we had to crawl to fit through it, as long... Uh, was a long staircase stretching down into a hidden underground room. The murder room? Spider webs and the dust here is really thick. Hey, come on. I want to see too. Is it some kind of storehouse, maybe? I tried to get a better look at what we were crawling into, but the stairs went so far down that eventually, with the flashlight, it was just too dark. So this is a hidden passageway that shouldn't exist inside a building that shouldn't exist. I think the danger level has reached its peaks here. <laughs> She's like, I think we're firmly beyond the point of hell nah, right? It feels like we're st feels like we're standing at the entrance to some realm. Some realm that's not even part of this world. Coraline very much. It's a story about Coraline. The class rep looked at me in the eyes. I was scared, but I knew exactly what she was going to say. She didn't need to speak a single word. Even if all that awaited us down here was the unimaginable horrific end. We're standing at the source of the answers we so desperately sought. We were poised to uncover the truth behind the curse of Sachiko Shinazaki. This was the gate to a new world. If we turned back, we regret it for the rest of our lives. So the two of us just looked at one another in the eyes and nodded. We were ready to descend the staircase into whatever abyss lurked below. I don't think even Naho made it this far, it seems to be. I could, uh, fuck. Naomi, stay alert and focus down there, no matter what happens. She began descending the stairs ahead of me, but stopped and looked back after only a few steps to ensue, uh, ensue? Wow, I, I completely blanked on the word. To issue me this one last uh, warning, I nodded again. Their friends literally died for them and they're going right back to where it started. <laughs> exactly. Uh, guessing these girls have <laughs> been gassing on these girls the whole entire time. I would do the same thing, you know? Hmm. You know what? I'm actually kind of like, even though they're not making the brightest of choices here, right? I'm kind of happy that the girls are doing something without the guys because they're like, we can do it too. Check this shit out. <laughs> uh, it's those same footsteps. There really is something else in here with us wandering around. It sounds like it's on the second floor. They were extremely close. It sounded as if they were poised just outside the door that Yoshi, uh, uh, to Yoshi's room, just a few feet away. Uh, Naomi, down the staircase, hurry. Okay. I'm so fucked. We are so fucked. We are so dead. And so the two of us fled through the, uh, fled through the secret door and down the stairs. No more hesitation. The wooden steps creaking and groaning behind us even more than the ones from the main stairwell. It felt like... God, every time I... T I feel like I'm about to yawn again, but it won't come out. It felt like they might fall apart at any moment. We took one step at a time, swallowing our fear and just pushing onward until eventually, finally, we arrived in a small, damp, musty room underground. Are you alright? There's a lot of junk on the ground here, so be careful where you walk. Okay. There's no light down here with us whatsoever, save for the class rat's shaking flashlight beam. And... <clears throat> Not, not shaking, my bad. Shanky? Shake, shaky? 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 What is that word? Shaggy. 
Shaky. Hmm. And all the beam reveals was a mess of books and clutter. But the twist of the wrist, what the fuck are your wrist? It then shone upon a desk containing a, a, I can't, why am I losing my ability to speak and read? A chaotic mountain of books, loose leaf notes, documents, and assorted beakers and flasks. It looks like some kind of mad scientist uh, had done research and conducted all manners of untold experience, experiments down here. Shaky spelt wrong? Okay, making sure. What's that? It looks like someone's family tree. The class rep shot over towards a desk further, uh, a, uh, a desk further in. Her interest pe peaked. M oh, wow, I can't. Fuck. <laughs> her interest peaked by a glimpse of a large document spread out on the surface. I followed her lead. Need a light? Need a light too? Don't you? Sorry. There's a desk over there with the saw blade, with the sharp tools on it. So it's kind of dangerous. Stay where you are. Genolo uh, genealog oh, wow, can't even say the word. Genealogy chart, gifted line? It really is a family tree, but what does it mean to be gifted? I mean, coming from the, coming from the girl who can fucking talk to spirits and shit. Shinazaki, Mifune, Shimamura, Mita, Na, uh, Nago, Na, Nago, Nago, that's how you pronounce that? Oh, I recognize some of these names. That's right. It's not necessarily a lie. There were many individuals born in the closing days of the Meiji period who possessed remarkable powers. These people achieved farm. By the way, who the fuck is this? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm reading it like, who the hell is this? I don't even know who this is. These people achieved fame for their, for their thought. Oh God, thoughtography. Thoughtography. What the fuck? Abilities of. I don't even know how to pronounce that word. I'm not even gonna try. I'm not even gonna try. Abilities and psychic talents prior to the so-called Shin Shingara Jinku? Fuck. Or clairvoyance controversy. I said clairvoyance, but that's not even the word that was there. Chizuko Mifune and Iku oh God, and Iku fuck. Ikuko Nago were particularly noteworthy figures at the time, and whether their abilities were real or not, it's is uh, beside the point. What matters is that even after the scientific community disregarded such ability, uh, disregarded, discredited such abilities, the truly gifted continue exploring them anyways, often in secret. So what if they're, so what if they're the gifted line? Doesn't that mean Yoshi and Sachiko were descended from those family clairvoyants? It seems sure that way. It, wow, it sure seemed that way. And from the looks of it, the Shinozaki line was never blessed with male heirs either. So you're related to them, right? <laughs> like, it's a maternal, uh, it's a matern maternal, fuck, goddamn. Can't even, uh, god. House that passes his blood and families named down from mother to daughter, generations after generation, though, uh, though adopted son-in-laws. Though adopted, my bad, through adopted son-in-laws. I was certain if I had traced this family tree far enough, I'd find the names of Yoshi and Sachiko. And there they were, and just like everyone before her, Yoshi had married a man who'd been adopted into the family in order to keep the Shinozaki name. Looks like the root of the tree is this person is named Sira? Sarah? Sira? Sina? John Sina? John Sina was a Shinozaki the whole entire time. Yoshi's mother's name is Raika. Kind of reminds you of May. Yeah, exactly. May. Did I just call her May? My bad. Maya. <laughs> I called her May. Of oh, Maya. Yeah, Maya and her family, definitely. She was the eldest daughter in her family and had no brothers, so that makes Yoshi a thoroughbred. A thoroughbred. A direct, unfiltered descendant of a Sarah. I can't even say her name. I suggest it stands to reason. And that she has so much power and influence at, even as a spirit. The rap- the rapping is getting pretty loud in here. What? <laughs> the rapping? <laughs> just fuck it. Just SoundCloud just starts playing. 
uh, coming down with precipitation. I ain't never seen a limitation. <laughs> like, what's going on? All these adopted fathers who continued the family line died suddenly after their children were born, it seems. Without every, without even one exception. Oh, God. It's like the family line had a mind of its own. It went to great lengths to eliminate the blood of other lines once it had served its purpose. Oh, fuck. These are the men who are willing to give up their own birthrights and take another name for the sake of the, for the sake of love. It must have been hard on a Shinazaki woman. Daddy's not breathing. Huh? No, darling, no. I suppose it was a fate that just couldn't be averted. Such a strong spiritual influence. What? Kane Shinazaki, Hiro Hirohito, Ayato. That's my grandmother, my grandfather, and my granddad. Grandpappy? I remember hearing that my grandfather was adopted into my grandmother's family and passed away shortly after my dad was born. The head of the family had three daughters, and Grandma Kane... Grandma Kane is descended from the youngest. I thought it was creepy enough just having the same last name, but to think my family is actually from the same lineage of Yoshi and Sachiko? Am I gifted then? What does that even mean? Hey, did you find something? Did you did you find out that you're that you're related to some sort of evil spirit and you're probably not gonna tell me because if you did I'm gonna you're gonna think that I'm gonna hate you for killing our friends? So instead of telling me this vital information, you're gonna keep it to yourself? I hope that's not what's happening. Yeah, sorry about that. I'll be right there. In fact, fire hazard or no, how about I lend you one of my candles? Here, take it. <laughs> the class rep had an old oversized sheet of paper in her hand and was shaking wildly. Did she find some crucial piece of information? I wonder. Book of Shadows. You know what? It took us this long to get that to get that title of the game into the game. This is the first time we ever heard of Book of Shadows. By the way, she's having an episode. Class rep, are you okay? It hurts. My head feels like it's being crushed in a vice. No, stop this. Keep it together. She suddenly turned down one corner of the room and froze completely. Uh, turned down, my bad. Turned towards one corner of the room and froze completely, gazing intently at the wall. Her eyes became wide as saucers. She was like a cat who stiffened up and just kept staring into thin air on high alert for no discernible reason. And just as cat owners are often left wondering that their pets, what their pets are seeing, I too wondered if she was looking at something or had heard a noise maybe. I was worried about her, but really, I was more scared than anything. I grabbed her and tried to shake her out of this disconcerting trance. Disconcerting? My bad. Dis... Wait, no, that... Yeah, I said that right. <laughs> Class rep? You're right there. But she brushed me off and held up my hand as if to say, hold it right there. She then began walking slowly towards the corner she'd been watching. There didn't seem to be anything special about it. Looked no different from anything else in the room. It was just an ordinary wall. Sachiko's just standing there, right? For a few moments longer, the class rep just stood there, gazing at this empty space. Then, with no explanation, she began tearing away loose boards. It wasn't difficult to do. The entire room was old and in tremendous dis uh, disrepair. And the wood was quite thoroughly rotten. Each board came off easily. Eventually, small gas began to form. She stuck her fingers into these and pulled, in, uh, pulled, yanking away whole chunks of wall, forming a bigger and bigger crevice. These crevices then finally merged into one big gaping hole, though with the hidden subroom no bigger than a closet had now been fully exposed. And with the subrooms sta uh, sat a thick, dark tome. Oh hell no! <laughs> Oh, fuck no. Get the- what? No. <laughs> That's when you say, alright, we're going. We're leaving. Bye. It's the Book of Shadows. What is this Harry Potter shit? It's the- it's the Book of Shadows. 
Why is this in Japan? What's going on? What's the Book of Shadows? Whatever it was, it was clearly a very old book. And it didn't look like it was born, uh, bound, bound, born, bound from paper. There were small ornamental patterns sewn into it, all of which had a certain disconcerting quality about them. In addition, a liquid that looked just as much like blood as it did ink had pooled into multiple huge stains all across the lip of the front cover. And the grotesque cover was already unpleasant looking enough to begin with. There's no mistaking it. These pages were made from human skin and animal hide. This is without a doubt the Book of Shadows. Sis told me about it. It's a dark tome with a long history of rotten blood, passed down from generation to generation in secret. It dates back to the... to the tum... wow. Tum... 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 I can't even say the fucking word. Tumultuous. Tumultuous days of witch hunts that occurred at the end of the Middle Ages, primarily in Europe. Witch hunts? Yeah. Mass paranoia led to the indiscrimination, prosecution, and slaughtering... slaughtering of as many... As many as 40,000 people. They were suspected of. I'm sorry. Yes, Netflix, I am still watching Sonic X. Thank you for asking me. <laughs> they were suspected of uh, practicing black magic by making pacts with the devil. So the churches and local communications brought them to trial, where they were almost always subject to hor horrif uh, horrible torture and eventually executed. Usually in cruel, in really cruel ways, people began blaming them for natural disasters, poverty, and other unfortunate, uh, uh, other unfortunate, uh, I can't say, words, out my mouth, speak them, realities of life, for some reason I couldn't say the word reality, and influential individuals seemed to, uh, seem them as scapegoats. The vast majority of those killed were just innocent victims of circumstance who happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. But there were f there were a few. There were a few gifted people among them who had legitimately mastered the practical use of magic. Who the fuck is is this her mom? Her grandma? Who is this? Twitch just crashed for a minute. Yeah. I believe it. Gifted people? And what do you mean practical use of magic? Are you talking like witches flying around on brooms and stuff? That's impossible. <laughs> it's hard to believe, isn't it? But I want you to know everything about this. About the things in this world that science can't quite explain. About the paranormal. I'm already familiar with your studies, though you taught me the laws of, na uh, the, laws of the natural world and that the true nature of magic is prayer. It makes sense, too. You're really easy to... Who the fuck is this? Is this her sister? Who is this? It makes sense, too. It's really easy to understand how powers like that would work. But anything much more... <clears throat> but anything more than that, like flying around on brooms and stuff, just seemed like fantasy to me. And I'm sure that's what Dad and Mom just have... Uh, okay, alright, so I'm guessing that's her sister. Alright. They never explained it, but that's her sister, I assume. And I'm sure that what Dad and Mom must have thought, too, when I told them I was interested in, Wicca, in Wicca... To them, it's all just dangerous fantasy. Though, there's also the, the Shinozaki family roots to consider, but that's a long story, so how about we save it for another time? Huh? Okay. Witches. You see, we're eventually village elders and sages back in these days, conducting themselves with intelligence, dignity, and honor. So when the witch hunt began, they were smart enough to hide their powers from public view. As a result, ironically, the majority of them survived. But even after the ban of witchcraft was lifted, the memories of what happened remained and the black arts continued to be sociably shunned. Eventually, the powers of magic began to fade with dis- uh, with disgust. With- with dis- uh, with disuse. My bad. And the witches feared that these powers passed from generation to generation throughout their long, proud history were in danger of being lost forever. So they began chronolog- chronologic- oh uh, wow. Chronoling the- I can't even say the fucking word. They put them on paper, <laughs> in the painstake detail for all prosperity. Prosperity? Perpetuity. What was that word? I didn't even, I just made up the word. I didn't even read it. I just looked at it. And the Chronicles is right here. The Book of Shadows. Passed from one gifted mage to another, 
revisit it and, append and append it countless times. A complete guide to witchcraft, detailing spells uh, pertaining to all creation. You may have heard of El Alizef. God. The infamous Lovecraftian grimoire that, that everybody says is just a work of fiction. But whenever this book comes up, even more researchers, people always debate whether or not it's real. They always admit it's a possibility. Supposedly, it contains a complete listing of white and black magic spells, all manner of lost arts, and even some forbidden acts of sorcery. As in, the real dangerous kind of magic. Hmm, it would be really dangerous with the wrong hands. That's why it's... Hmm, that's why it was supposed to have been enshrined and kept under watch by the witch's descendants. So why is something like this here, then, tucked away in a hidden room in the rural Japan? I don't know. But it's been a good half a century or so since anybody's been able to prove, uh, prove they laid their eyes on it. And that's led many people to start doubting its existence. The class rep suddenly picked up the book and began casually thumbing through it, as if she was looking up a word in the dictionary. Hey, is it really okay to be holding that, much less opening it? Yeah, it can't, it can't hurt to take a quick look. The tome with the cover that seemed to have been stretched, uh, stretched, my bad, stitched together from the hides of many different animals looked heavy in the class rep's hands. She became instantly a cross in the contents of, and crossed, wow, engrossed in the contents of, uh, in the contents as she hungrily flipped through the pages one after another. As for me, all I can do was watch in awe as my very real friend and classmate lost herself in this very cold book in this very impossible place. As expected, the book was written not in Japanese, but in a mixture of French and what I could only assume to be magic runes of some sort. As a high school student, I certainly couldn't read any of it, nor could the class rep, but some pages had Japanese notes scribbled in margins. Notes that were very possibly penciled than Yoshi Sinodaki. I have no idea that there'll be Japanese footnotes for it, <clears throat> for it or not, but I'm betting if I look in the sorcery section, the glint in her eyes was the only desperation as... <clears throat> I'm losing my voice. <laughs> the glint in her eyes was one of desperation as she continued flipping through the pages. What was she doing? I was starting to get uncomfortably nervous about this whole thing. Eventually, her legs must have gotten tired as she just sat down on the floor while she continued passing through the Book of Shadows. Passing? Paging. Then finally, she seemed to find whatever it was she was looking for. The sound of stench, stench, stretched skin flipping upon itself stopped, and she just stared. This is it. What? Land of the Corpses, a spell to open the door of the dead. I think this is what created Heavenly House. There's notes all over it. They certainly are. But why has the whole page been crossed out like that? I don't know. Maybe the spell failed. Maybe whoever was casting it seized up with fear partway through. Hmm? But what does it matter now? Look. Look at this. Look. Ri rising of corpses. A spell to resurrect the dead. That can't actually work, can it? Resurrecting the dead is just impossible. Are you still bound by common sense, then? Have you forgotten where, we're or where we are right now? I had to admit it. That was a good point. Reality was, uh, reality as I knew it was far different from now than it was when I woke up this morning. But is it okay for us to do something like that? I mean, ethnically, when we be crossing a line humans aren't meant to cross. Are you scared? Huh? No, you're not just scared. You're also forgetting all about the people we lost, about what they've been, about what they've been going through. Think about Miss Yui and Suzumoto and Shinohara, Morshigi. All, as, all at their wits and suffering in that horrible place. Think about how painful their deaths were and how their existence were erased from this world. Can you really accept that as reality? I know I sure can't. I'm betting the same is true for you. That's right. Our friends were dead. They died. And we came here so we can do something about it. And if we didn't do this, nothing would change. They'd still be dead. No hope... However, hearing their voices again, their faces eventually forgotten. Tears began welling up in my eyes. I missed them so much, and I had to do whatever it took to get them back. 
If I could just take them again. If I could take them? If I could just talk to them again. If I could talk to Seiko even one more time. It's okay. It's okay, there's nothing to be afraid of anymore. We climbed our way out of this hell, we broke free from Heavenly Host. So let's follow our hearts now. If there's something we can do to fix the situation, then we have to do it. So come on, let's do it. Okay. It didn't matter how improbable or even impossible this was. Even if there was only one thing in a million... One thing? Even if there was one... Eh. Even if there was only one in a million chance, we had to take it. It was absolutely foolish for us to try this. It was unnatural and unholy and completely in, in, indivisible. <laughs> wow. But as long as there was the sight of the slight of upon, wow, as long as there was that slight possibility, this was something that just had to be done. We weren't about to give up without a fight. I've heard the part. I heard the partitioners of forbidden sorcery suffered even greater payback for their actions than black magic users. But this book wasn't written in Japanese. And I can't read the parts that warn about that, so out of sight, out of mind. I can't handle this. This isn't quite the solution I had in mind, but as long as it lets us reunite with our friends we lost, I really don't care. Since they don't even exist in this world anymore, dragging them back by force seems like our only option. Yeah, so let's just do it. Okay, how about we start with Suzumoto? We need a for... We need a photo. Oh, uh, wow. A photograph of. for the spell to work. And I got one with her, right? I got one of her with me. Can't even read. We're about to. We're about to do what Full Metal Alchemist told us not to do The Law of Equivalent Exchange. Alright, let's do this. Oh, we're so fucked. Our first attempt at resurrecting the dead was gonna be the spell to bring back Mayu Suzumoto. All the materials we needed were present and accounted for in bottles and jars with the room, uh, within the room. A beetle cart. <clears throat> a beetle carapace, part of an animal's body, etc. The first step was to carve a pentagram into the floor with a knife. Then place three paper dolls in the center of the sort used in the- Are we still doing this in the ghost house? We're fucked. The sort, uh, of the sort used in the Sachiko ritual. The one in the middle would bear the name of the person we wish to raise, and the one at either side would bear the names of the caster. Our names. Mayu Suzumoto. The class rep was was then to place Suzumoto's photo on top of the paper doll to, uh, dedicated to her. As for our paper dolls, we each had to blow on them three times then cut both our palms with a knife and coat the spell materials in our blood. Okay, here we go. Be strong. Oh, we're doing blood magic. Oh, we're fucked. My blood mixed together with the class reps in a white ceramic dish forming Forming one singular gulp, gulp, gulp. I can't, I can't even say the word. Are you okay over there? My dog is like losing his mind. Are you all right back there, Zero? I'm making a lot of noise. <laughs> I remember hearing once that everyone's blood is a slightly different color. I found myself thinking of this as I, uh, as I applied pressure to my throbbing palms. With all the setup taken care of, it was only now time to chant the spell. Fortunately, these foreign words all had Japanese pronunciations written above them. I am not. What the fuck? Are tumere, conda, atros, inimus, kalit. Demura. <laughs> I've been hearing your dog this whole time, but I haven't questioned it. <laughs> I know, right? Don't say it. I already did. Too late. Fucking, I'm sitting there 
with my legs crossed, hands asphyxiated, talking about fuck my eyes closed, humming to myself, talking about Azeroth, Metriel, and Zinthos. This is starting to feel crazy. I was sitting here listening to the class rep chant a magic spell to raise the dead, for goodness sakes. I wasn't sure how much of a grip I had on reality anymore. What what were we thinking? Trying something like this. Would this really bring Suzumoto back? No. I had to concentrate. If I doubted the spell, then the spell would fail. For now, I had to believe that this would work. And I had no reason not to. Retreya what the fuck? Retreya Menemus Capra Cap Capra. This is this fucking spell is a bunch of Capra, that's what it is. The ritual took several hours to complete. Wait, several hours? What the fuck? You're just sitting in this ghost house with fucking Ookie Spooky above you upstairs walking around the house. And for several hours, you're just sitting there doing this. But what the fuck is wrong with you people? The ritual took several hours to complete with the class rep carefully chanting away the whole time. Finally, the last word on the last page was spoken. Class rep? Are you okay? Come on. Well, do you think it's gonna work? Huh? Blood red stains that looked almost like letters suddenly splashed into the open book of shadows, though it was unclear where they came from. What? Oh shit! No, the book catches fire where... Class rep quickly snatched the book away from the flame that had sprout that had sprouted out of thin air. The book, the photo of Suzumoto, she sat down, had completely burnt to nothing, but the paper doll below it was unscathed. So what does that mean? Does it mean we succeeded? Y yeah. Shig? Shig, where are you? That voice. That was unmistakably Suzumoto. The two of us took on an, uh, took one another's hands, and we just waited. Shig? Where are you? Suzumo? I started to call out for her, but the class rep held her hand out to stop me. Something's not right. What do you mean? She's walking in circles. After another few footsteps, we heard the unmistakable sound of the heavy safe door. We left the jar open up all the way. Then the footsteps resumed. This time, they were coming toward us. Oh, we fucked up. Why didn't we do the spell somewhere else? Why did we do it in the spooky house? What were the- what the fuck were you thinking? I instinctively sh uh, shrunk him back and frozen myself in place, afraid of the unknown presence approaching us from above. She was certainly in no hurry. Slowly plodding, she climbed down the stairs. It was Suzumoto, all right. But her face was gone. But her face... Her face was completely blotted out. No eyes, no nose, no mouth. Shig? Oh, fuck, what did we do to you? I love how they're all like... <laughs> Does this mean... Wait, question. So does this mean that they liked this person a lot? Or does it mean that they liked them the least because it was the first one they tried? <laughs> and they're like, well, if anything goes bad, this person's going to pay for it. Her hair clips look like angry eyebrows. They do. I'm looking at them right now. <laughs> I can tell if she was screaming or moaning, but either way, she was clearly in agony. The sound was barely even human. It was a death knell. Huh? Our spell had failed. The Suzumoto-like being we summoned was lying flat on the ground, face up, writhing and spasming. There was nothing we could do to help her, nothing at all. As I observed these, uh, these convulsions, I noticed rune-like symbols appear all over her body. And then without a warning, her paper doll burst into flames. Sorry, Suzumoto, we didn't mean to make you suffer. As soon as it did, blood began spraying from from each of the ruins on her body like water shooting from a fire hose. Duh, shit. 
Her arms, neck, and thighs are separated from her torso, right where the ruins had appeared a moment ago, and the Suzumono like being moved no more. The flame that had engulfed her paper doll was not completely extinguished, leaving behind nothing but ash. Oh! Shit! The consequences was tying your own body to- Oh, you're sharing their fate. Then the class rat fell to her knees as well. She was bleeding from her arms and legs in the exact same spot as who's a motor-like being and bore the same runic marks. Class rat! Oh, shit! Round of saw blades were now jutting from the marks of her body. Why were they? Why were they there? Where they come from? Oh God, it hurts! I bet. Class rep. What is this? It's fuck. I told you, Full Metal Alchemist warned you. Equivalent exchange, motherfucker. It's the exact same. The same death as the fake Suzumoto we subjected to. Uh, uh, Suzumoto was subjected to. I was gonna die in the exact same way. I heard the protectioners of Forbidden Sorcerers suffer even greater paybacks for their actions than black magic users. But this book wasn't written in Japanese, and I can't read the parts that warned about it, so out of sight, out of mind. Payback. Shit. The paper doll put it out! Hang in there. I'll have to let it, uh, I'll have, to, I'll have it out of no time. Just another few seconds. I tried putting out the fire by slapping the paper doll with my hands, but I was so panicked I couldn't even feel the heat of the flame on my skin. Oh come on, pull some, pull some fucking full metal, full metal shit here. Find a loophole. Put her body in a suit of armor. It wasn't working. It wasn't, it wasn't doing anything. The fire just continued to burn. It's not going out. What do I do? Please! I'm gonna die! Was there anything else I could try? I looked around and saw a paint can full of water nearby. Girl, you got shoes. Come on, work. I was... Mm. I was acting on impulse. I didn't even think about what I was doing. I just threw the entire contents of the, of the can right onto the f uh, flaming paper doll. Oh, you fucked up. Fucking book of shadows. Blood began spurting from the mark on the class rep's neck. A rounded saw blade from the desk earlier was digging into it from, uh, eh. Digging into it for some reason. I don't want to die. Save me! Seems to be no escape for us. We were destined to die here. This was our punishment for meddling with things no human should for playing God. Mine was on fire too now. I was next. There's no fighting this. We we're both gonna die here. We're gonna die here horribly and painfully. Shit. Like an angel sent down from on high, our savior suddenly appeared. A woman older than us scrambled down the stairs and called out the class rep's name. She leaped over the railing and, partic and practically dove towards the burning paper dolls. By pouring... Who the fuck? I guess that's her sister. By... You know what? Didn't we? Then I think about it. Maybe I did see her in this game earlier and I just don't remember. By the power of the guardian spirits, I can't... <laughs> By the power invested in me as the All-Father, I cast you out! <laughs> just pull a complete Odin there. I cast you out. fires out. I had no idea that this woman, what this woman just done, but whatever it was, it saved us. The flames were out and we had no longer been in danger. And the class rep's neck, though, though gashed, was still fully intact. She flung herself as, as this new arrival, <laughs> she flung herself at this new arrival and lashed on the tears, practically exploding from her eyes. I guess this is the sister of hers I've heard so much about. Skinny 
てくれたどうしたことが分かったの What the fuck just happened? Dude, if you if you could see my face right now, that whole entire time my mouth was agape. I'm like, what the fuck? What? Oh man. Oh, get ready for this fucking shit to get flagged. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna turn it up a little bit. There you go. All right. So that was supposed to be the prologue to this game, right? But for some reason, it was the last option in the fucking chapter select. I'm assuming what happened is we pulled the Edel, uh, a Full Metal Alchemist, right? She saved us, but in doing so, she forfeit her own life, I guess. You know, black magic and all that. Equivalent exchange. Alchemy. <laughs> but, huh. Interesting. That was... I was a little taken surprise there, mainly because I had the voice, I had the voices off. All right. Huh. My question is, so, all right. We have the Book of Shadows, right? Finally, we know what the Book of Shadows is. Now, I thought with that prologue that the Book of Shadows was going to, like, be the catalyst as to, like, open the Book of Shadows... Here's a way to get our friends back. In order to do it, we gotta go through shit again, right? But it really didn't tell us jack shit. It just let us know that, hey man, book shadows here, do some spells. Uh, you fucked up and your sister's dead now. Huh. There's gotta be more. There's gotta be something. Something has to explain it. This might have extra. I think this game has extras. Like extra chapters and shit, right? Well, that was, that was a surprising turnabout. <laughs> what the fuck? I'm surprised. That got me. Now I'm gonna have to, I know for a fact I'm gonna have to save this stream super fast before Twitch fucking goes like, and muted. Because all this anime music. Okay, is there anything else after that? Prologue clear. EVP machine unlocked bonus menu. And we have two more testimonies. I got achievement. The turning point. Okay. Interesting. Well, first things first, let me go back to the... Let me go back to OBS real quick. And lower the volume. Because this game likes to be super fucking loud. At like random points. All right, there we go. Well, that's all the chapters. We did it. How long did that take us? Not too long. <laughs> Not too long. Huh. Now, I was supposed to finish playing this last week, but unfortunately what happened was that, uh, what had happened was, what happened was that uh, I just overslept. Plain and simple. I woke up, looked at the clock, it said it was like 4 already, and I went, nah, I'm, my streaming time has passed. I'm going back to sleep. <laughs> Alright, bonuses. Let's see. EVP machine, so that's the music stuff, right? Oh wait, no, characters, what? 3D voice file? Hold up. What the fuck? What is this shit? Options. Do that real quick. What the hell is EVP machine? I want to know.
Oh wait, did I go back to options? Why the fuck did I do that? I'm sorry, my bad. I wasn't paying attention. Bonus. Listen and create conversations using any of the game's binaural 3D voices. What? <laughs> so, theoretically, if I wanted to make if I wanted to make a video of these characters saying anything, I can just do that. All right, hold up. Seiko. Why is it coming from the left side of my ear? Is there any other choices I have? Shishido. I felt uncomfortable about that one. Okay, that's weird. For some reason, it's all coming from the left side of my headphones. I don't know why. Okay. Cursed phonograph. This is the one with the music. Where's that? Where's that good ass music that we love so much? Huh. Some of the music is still locked. Interesting. I wonder how I get that. Where's that sound that we love so much? Ray of Hope? Start fucking dancing like a madman. That's that, that's that good shit. <laughs> that's that good shit. Alright, I want to see the Gallery of Spirits real quick. Because these are all the CGs in the game, right? No image, so I'm guessing I just didn't unlock this one. I must have missed something. Uh, remember this. Oof, that was a, that was a bad one. That was a, oops, that was a, that was a oopsie on my part. Um... Let's see. Didn't get that. I'm trying to... I'm really trying to pay attention because I'm pretty sure there was like a CG that I saw earlier of Shinozaki's sister. Alright. Oh yeah, by the way. For those who missed it last time, uh, <laughs> uh, the little sister died. It was pretty gruesome. Um, book shadows. Okay, and these are just CGs that they did for for the first game. Huh. Whoa. Fucking freak. She's like, I'm okay. I'm fine. Nothing bad ever happens. Hmm. I'm guessing this is when she was experiencing uh, the girl's death. Right? This is when I fucked up in the first game and I got Shinazaki killed. Oops. My bad. What the fuck? Who? What? Oh. I'm guessing that's Sanchiko and her mom. And yeah, okay. Huh. I don't feel comfortable about that. That that doesn't make me feel comfortable. <laughs> I thought you meant the dude's face, <laughs> but you saw the girl. She's like, I'm fine. Oh, look at these guys. Aren't you happy for them? Look at them. Aw, oh, look at you. Half of you are fucking dead. <laughs> All right. Time to check out those testimonies. The last two that we have is the voice actor for, for Naomi and uh, what's his fucking name? Forgot his goddamn. I can never remember his first name. It's Chishida, whatever the hell his name is. Mochida Satoshi Yaku. Satoshi Mochida, that's his name. Hi, Tekoto de Sine, Konkai, Corpus Party, Brad Cover, Repeated Fear, No, Ma, Zokuhen to Yukadesine, Dai Nisho, 
ブルえー、コープスパーティー、ブック・オブ・シャドウズ、はいえー、こちらの方ですね、えー、プレイしていただきまして、本当にありがとうございます。ということで、えー、今回ですね、あのー、まあ、僕はですね、あの新たに収録した部分というのの、えー、収録が終わったところなんですけれども、まあ、今回、あのー、いろいろとその、実際にゲームが、えー、ゲーム本編、が始まる前のお話ですね、えー、ゆい先生とまあちょっといろいろなんていうんですかそういうまあなんかね淡い感じのなんかそういうのがちょっとやっててそういう感じのそういう感じのそういう感じのそういう感じのそういう感じのそういう感じのそういうそのゆい先生を、えー、看病することになったサトシ君ということで、まあ、あの本編は本当にですね、えーまあ、怖いというふうな、えー、本当に怖い印象があったりとかしますけれどもね、えー、結構僕もファンレターでいろいろとあの本当に怖くてですね、えー、まずオープニングを見た段階でもう電源を消しましたっていう人もいたぐらい本当に、えー、怖いものになっていますけれども、まあ、あのこのゆい先生との、えー、このストーリーは、えー、全く全然そういうふうなこともなくまあ新キャラクターが出てきたりとかそういうふうなことに関してですねまああのちょっと触れていたりだとかまあどなたでもお気軽にやっていただける話になっていたのではないかなって思うんですけれどもねでもおそらくこれゲームクリアしないと出てこないとかそういうふうなことですよねきっとねね、なのであのこれを聞いている方はね頑張ったんじゃないかな、はいね、怖がりながら頑張った人もいればもうすごく楽しみで頑張った人もいたんじゃないかなと思いますなので、まあ、どちらも含めて本当に頑張った、right. I did a job. I did a phenomenal job. I am the best. ということで、えー、まあね、あのー、まだ一回しかプレイしてないという方もきっといるのでございます。Correct, えー、そういう方はですね、本当何度も何度も遊べると思いますので、何度も何度も遊んでいただけたらなと思います。そして怖い人は、ちょっと一周目やって、ああ、怖かったなって思った人はですね、友達と一緒にプレイしてみてはいかがでしょうか。ということで、えー、今回はこの辺で、またお会いできるのかなどうなんだろうな。ね、え本当に僕としてはまだまだ続いてい。ま、like, ね like, はい、まだまだ続いてい。まだまだ続いてい。まだまだ続いてい。まだまだ続いていい。まだまだ続いていい。まだまだ続いていい。まだまだ続いていい。まだまだ続いていい。まだまだ続いていい。まだまだ続いていい。まだまだ続いていい。まだ The, the most important part he has in this game is like in、uh, Naomi, either Naomi or Mayu's chapter, where it starts out and they're about to do the fucking <clears throat> the ritual. And then Mochita gets up and he's all like, Guys, I'm not sure about this. I don't, I don't, think, I don't think that's a smart idea. Right? Because he's like the only character that seems to remember the loop, I guess. But after that, you really see nothing else of him. Like, you see him in the chapter with the teacher, but, you know, he's just there taking care of his sick teacher. That's all he's really doing. He's not doing anything too important. So, it's actually really interesting that he literally has no place in this game. Same thing with Kishinuma. Kishinuma is just kind of there. And then, you know, they really don't have that much to do with this game as a whole. Naomi, tell me what you're up to. ナオミ役の佐藤里奈です。皆さんゲームプレイお疲れ様でした。なんじゃこりゃーって言ってるんじゃないかなと私は思うんですけど。Like, the Her head came off. えー、演じている私としましてはですね、もう聖子がずっと死んでですね、もうどうにもこうにも悲しい気持ちに愛になりました。えー、っと、Motherfucker, I'm still sad that we lost her. I like Seiko. <laughs> Who doesn't like Seiko? She's great. ずっと死んでたみたいな。泣いたよ、本気でって言ってて
私もだよっていう話を、えー、したぐらいなんか私たち救われなかったんですけどどういうことなんでしょうね。ねえということで次回はなんかこう救われる話があったらいいなーなんて思っています。<笑>まあでもあの緊迫したねあの状態演じられるものではなかなかないのでそういうものを演じられるのはすごく楽しいのですがちょっと最近救いがなさすぎるような気がねしたりしますよね。えー、次回も何かこうねあのまだ物語続いてますけど、ね、どうか、えー、分からないんですけれども皆さんも楽しみに待っててください。というわけでナオミ役の佐藤里奈でした。See, that was nice. Why the fuck was Mochita's voice actor so long? <laughs> Motherfucker took like a whole half hour.、Uh, damn. Alright. Damn, but Senko's fucking shit was. That's sad. I hope. Listen. Listen. I'm not the type of guy to. to pick up like your anime shippings and shove it in your face and say, now make them kiss. But I hope, I hope we get some sort of closure with Naomi and Seiko, right? Because that's too much, man. You need that. Let's see. Albums 95%, cast interviews 100%, music. All right. Albums. That's just unlocking CGs. So I'm assuming for all actual, like, main story content, we've done it. Corpse Party Book of Shadows. Oh, fuck. Again, why was the prologue all the way at the bottom? It made it seem like it was the most important thing to do. Like, for last. But, alright. There's no, like, there's no, like, extra chapters or anything I see, I think. I think it's just, yeah, it's just the social testimonies and stuff. So, huh. That's Corpse Party Book of Shadows, right? Maybe. In the next Corpse Party game, which I don't. Actually, let me look let me look that up. What is, what is the next Corpse Party game? I don't think. Why is that open? Oh my god. I don't think that, uh. I'm not sure. Well, I think. I heard that. Not Chrono. What the fuck? Why is my phone asking for so many goddamn passwords? What the fuck? Cut it out. Alright. Like, I know the next game is like,、uh, what is it? Is Sachiko's Birthday Bash or whatever? But that's kind of like a spin off game. <laughs> so,、uh, I actually want to know what the next Corpse Party game is after this. I think it's Blood Drive.、Uh, let me see. Let's see. There's Book of Shadow. Oh, Court Party to You. That's what it says, right?、Uh... Oh, wait, no. Of course, party to you. I'm guessing that's、uh, Sachiko's birthday bash.、Um... Yeah. So. What the fuck am I looking at? So, of course, party to Dead Patient. That seems to be the next one. And it says it's an RPG like style game. I'm pretty sure I have that. Pretty sure I have that in my Steam right now, right? I think I do. I think I do. Let's, let's take a quick look at the Steam. Get this out of my way. I'm trying to move the window. Oh my god, did I just fucking freeze something in my game? I'm gonna cry. I'm gonna cry in like two seconds. Come on. There we go. There we go. Whenever I click off the game, it, it pretends like it doesn't exist and it freezes up. I want to look at my Steam list real quick because I'm pretty sure I have that in there. Oh my god, Steam, will you fucking load up for me, please? What are you doing? Steam, open. There you go. I had to right click on you for you to listen to me. Yep, Course Party 2 Dead Patient. I do have it, and apparently that game is. 
is more from what I'm hearing it's more of a uh, it goes back to the RPG type feeling of the first course party game we played but you know with like updated uh with updated looks and shit right all that stuff so <clears throat> So when we come back to Corpse Party, we will be playing, uh, we will be playing Corpse Party 2, Dead Patient, but for now, Corpse Party is going to be taking the back seat, because now that we finished Corpse Party, that means we paved the way to get back to Phoenix Wright, but we're not going to do that instantly, because <laughs> next stream, we're going to do, we're going to go back into Sly Cooper, right, continue with that. Sly 2, and then after that, you know, get back to Conception, then we're back with Phoenix Wright, and we can finally start Phoenix Wright 3, uh, Trials and Turbulations, right? I think that's what it's called. So, that's gonna be fun, but as for right now, course party's done, we can finally have a sigh of relief. And now that course party is done and we have like what? How how much time do I even have left? <laughs> we had like a whole two hours of stream time left. I don't even know what the fuck to do anymore. Uh <clears throat> so, first off, let me just get the outros out of the way for the people on YouTube. People on Twitch, if you're here to watch Court Party, thank you for watching. Right. Uh we are done with the course party playthrough, finally. Now my dog is starting to lose his shit again. And next time we stream, which is tomorrow night, we're going to come back with Sly 2, continue that, and, you know, all that. Put that in the schedule. For people on YouTube, thank you for watching. Yada yada. All this. Subscribe, like, whatever. Who cares? <laughs> and I will see you in the next video. I'm a chef, chef too.